friends welcome back to 20th week we are going to discuss uh, different uh, events of the week the week starts from 11th may up to 17th may what are the important events let us uh, look at the first and the foremost is uh, the prime minister's uh, visit to china then comes to the visit of the prime minister to mongolia other important aspect is uh, tax payers money cannot be spent on building personality cult that means with the tax payers money people cannot uh, publicize the important uh, orders of the supreme court then comes uh, jailalita was acquitted in the disproportionate assets case coming to the world events another earthquake in nepal more than 100 killed then mohammad morsi leader of uh, muslim brotherhood former president of egypt was uh, given death sentence humanitarian crisis as uh, rohingyas are fleeing uh, myanmar coming to the other events uh, ramadi the capital of amber province in iraq captured by isis coming to the miscellaneous events in the education rankings in oecd asians occupy top 5 places replacing european countries and america and in sports sudhir men cup was won decisively by china defeating japan china won sudhir men cup which is the prestigious cup in badminton for the 10th time out of 14 times right friends so let us discuss issue by issue first and the foremost is the prime minister's visit to china he stayed in china for 3 uh, days first day he visited xi'an second day he visited the capital uh, beijing third day shanghai so before going into the details of his visit i would like to tell a brief about the country china all of you are well aware the currency is uh, renminbi capital is beijing largest city is the uh, shanghai and that system of governance in china is called a totalitarian government the system of government is a totalitarian government because the communist party of china decides most of the issues communist party of china decides uh, most of the issues what people want what they do not want the other issue with regard to china is china has got world's largest army around 22 to 23 lakh army china has got world's largest army people's daily is the official newspaper of chinese government gdp is almost 11 trillion dollars five times of india's of course the most populous country in the world with 135 crore population around 135 crore population and as far as manufacturing is concerned china became world's giant having known all these things with regard to china let us look at uh, thorny issues between india and china first and the foremost thing from indian perspective what are the thorny issues first and the foremost thing is border dispute china is not accepting the present border they have their own reservations with regard to especially arunachal pradesh china is not considering the sovereignty of india on arunachal pradesh that is the first and the foremost thaw in the relations of india and china the second important issue is with regard to the people from arunachal pradesh whenever they are visiting china china is issuing stapled visas i would like to explain you a bit when i want to visit china i have to have my passport and they will stamp on my passport whenever i visit china they will stamp on my passport whenever i visit china but when people from arunachal pradesh visit china they 
do not stamp the passport they will give separate form which is stapled with the passport when they are leaving the country that form is taken out that means they are not accepting the sovereignty of arunachal pradesh people as the citizens of india that is the biggest issue coming to the third issue they are supporting the projects which are passing through pak occupied kashmir china is supporting the projects which are passing to pak occupied kashmir one of the lines pertaining to silk road connecting gwadar port last week we discussed when chinese president visited pakistan it was decided to go for 3000 kilometers of highway connecting gwadar port which is a part of the silk road project and this project passes through pak occupied kashmir that is the biggest worry for india the fourth important issue is the trade deficit is 48 billion dollars roughly i am talking about the figures the trade deficit is approximately 48 billion dollars trade deficit means we are importing more from china than what we are exporting china is the manufacturing giant we are importing several manufacturing products at the same time please don't forget we are strong in services as well as pharmaceuticals we are strong in services as well as pharmaceuticals but they are not creating conducive atmosphere for our services as well as pharmaceuticals to penetrate into that country we are strong in services as well as pharmaceuticals but they are not making it conducive atmosphere for our products especially services and pharmaceuticals into their country that's why the trade deficit is around 48 billion dollars and more than all these things because of the border dispute because of the stapled visas there is lot of mistrust created these are the issues from indian perspective if you look at from chinese perspective the most important issue is border dispute and the second important issue is support extended by india to dalai lama that is another big issue india extended support to dalai lama when they came out of tibet and china is not happy with this for the past 50 years china considers dalai lama as a separatist dalai lama was given asylum in our country that is not acceptable to their country the other important aspect is india's position with regard to the policy of united states of america in asia pacific region in asia pacific region with the support of japan and australia united states of america is going to build up naval bases and india's position with regard to this is not acceptable to china so these are the issues when you look at from indian and chinese perspective and under these circumstances expecting a lot from china because of the visit of the prime minister is not anticipated and at the same time probably this visit will act as a tool for removing mistrust between both the countries as well as enhancing cultural ties and leaving the geopolitical situation apart probably there may be further strengthening of ties with regard to the geo economics geo politics is different geo economics is different when there is border dispute that comes under geo political issue when there is strengthening of economic ties it becomes a geo economic issue probably because of this visit there may be removal of mistrust between both the countries and the second important point is it will strengthen economic cooperation between indian companies and chinese companies right friends having listen to these things let us uh, look at uh, china and here in china the president is xi jinping president is the general secretary of communist party of china he is the head of military so he is the most powerful person and li keqing is the premier and he is the head of government or you can say here he is the head of bureaucracy 
he is the head of a government or you can say he is the head of a bureaucracy right let us look at the issues one by one first day prime minister's visit started with visit to xion xion is the hometown of china's president xi jinping and indian prime minister's visit started with xion symbolic because xi jinping started his visit from ahmedabad last year and now the prime minister started his visit from xion xion is the hometown and situated in the province where xi jinping was born here summit level talks were held discussions were held with regard to strengthening counter terrorism cooperation connectivity issues here prime minister visited the big wild goose pagoda pagodas are religious places for buddhism and this was constructed in the year 7th century this was constructed in 7th century huyan song after visiting india for 18 years went back to xion and stayed there spreading buddhism then the prime minister visited terracotta warriors here sculptures are available sculptures of terracotta terracotta is nothing but one type of clay sculptures made of terracotta of warriors chariots available in this museum the prime minister visited this big wild goose pagoda as well as terracotta warriors museum in xian province and at the same time the prime minister presented a replica of stone casket of buddhist relics excavated from watnagar district in gujarat replicas of stone casket of buddhist relics excavated from watnagar district of gujarat at the same time the prime minister presented archaeological drawings of excavations at watnagar in gujarat this was on first day looking to the second day on second day the prime minister visited beijing the capital of china india and china signed 24 agreements worth more than 10 billion dollars which includes railways as well as education two three important things here india extended electronic tourist visa facility or etv facility to chinese travelers electronic tourist visa facility extended to chinese citizens hotline facility between two army headquarters hotline facility between two army headquarters then out of 24 agreements 13 agreements pertain to people to people ties three cities in india chennai hyderabad aurangabad and karnataka state are selected for sister city pacts with cities in china as well as sister province pact with the province in china the other thing is yunnan university is selected for starting yoga college and the fudan university for center for gandhian and indian studies these are the developments on 15th may in beijing and on 16th may the prime minister visited shanghai the biggest city in china here the prime minister addressed a business forum where ceos of 22 companies participated they include jack ma of alibaba and 21 business to business agreements 21 agreements indian and chinese companies signed 21 agreements worth 22 billion dollars and the prime minister also addressed indian diaspora in shanghai where 5000 people attended and the prime minister coined a new 5f formula that is farm to fiber to fabric to fashion to foreign the prime minister coined the 5f formula farm to fiber to fabric to fashion to foreign right so business to business agreements 21 agreements were signed worth 22 billion dollars in shanghai basically the visit to beijing is the government to government the visit to shanghai is business to business between indian and chinese companies right friends remaining things you can go through these ppts due to paucity of time 
I am skipping some of the items. You can go through in detail through these PPTs. Let us move on to the next one. The Prime Minister visited Mongolia. Mongolia is the Central Asian nation. Boundaries towards North Russia. Towards the South, it is China. It is the landlocked country between Russia on one side, China on the other side. Predominantly Buddhist country. The population is uh, around 30 lakhs. Area is around 15 lakh square kilometers. The population density is just 2 per square kilometer. Most sparsely populated country. It follows parliamentary democracy. You may ask a question, what is parliamentary democracy and presidential democracy? India is example of parliamentary democracy. Executive, the prime minister is answerable to parliament. Parliament is answerable to people. And in America, president is the real head, directly elected by the people. That is presidential form of democracy. India is parliamentary democracy. Mongolia follows parliamentary democracy. And it is the most sparsely populated country. Please don't forget the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the first one to visit Mongolia. He is the first Indian Prime Minister to visit Mongolia. In Mongolia, the Prime Minister held discussions with his counterpart. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced $1 billion line of credit. $1 billion line of credit to expand their infrastructure network. The Prime Minister also handed over Bhavatron equipment for cancer treatment. The Prime Minister also gave away Bhavatron equipment for cancer research. As the country is predominantly Buddhist, he also gave a sampling of Mahabodhi tree as a symbolic gesture. He also gave a sampling of Mahabodhi tree as a symbolic gesture and the remaining things you can see through these PPTs. So, this visit to China as well as Mongolia falls in this week and visit to South Korea we will discuss during next week. Having learned these things, let us move on to the other issues. Supreme Court Historical verdict by Supreme Court, taxpayers' money cannot be spent on building personality cult. The meaning is, with the taxpayers' money, you cannot issue full-page advertisements to raise your personality cult. You are seeing several ministers, several cabinet ministers, state ministers, chief ministers, all are issuing full page advertisements where the pictures of the ministers are depicted and Supreme Court clearly ruled that you cannot improve personality cult at the cost of public money or taxpayers money. Last year, Supreme Court constituted a commission headed by Madhavan Menon. Last year, Supreme Court constituted a commission headed by Madhava Menon. Based on Madhava Meenan committee recommendations, two judge bench gave this historic order that you cannot spend taxpayers money to enhance your personality cult. And the exceptions here are the president, the prime minister and the chief justice of the country. As per the Supreme Court's orders, the exceptions are the President, the Prime Minister and the Chief Justice of the country. Right friends, look into the issues around the world. First and the foremost is another earthquake in Nepal. This time, the earthquake of 7.3 intensity on Richter scale hit mountainous region around 80 kilometers towards the northeast of Kathmandu. 
Namche Bazaar, a place called Namche Bazaar near Mount Everest. More than 100 people killed, around 2,500 injured. Because of this earthquake, in Bihar, 19 persons killed and several people were injured. Most of the injuries were reported from East Champaran district in Bihar. And geologists say that these are due to stress changes caused by the serious earthquake that occurred on 25th April. These earthquakes are due to the stress changes caused by the earthquake, massive earthquake which occurred on April 25 and fortunately the death toll this time is not that much. You all very well aware, more than 7000 people lost their lives in Nepal due to the earthquake which occurred on 25th of April. Look into the next one, Mohammed Morsi and 100 others sentenced to death in Egypt. Egypt was ruled by Hosni Mubarak for 30 years up to 2011. In the year 2011, there was an uprising. In the uprising, in the year 2011, thousands of prisoners were escaped. Muslim Brotherhood is the organization which was established in the year 1928. It has got its presence in several countries. In the year 2011, in the Arab uprising, which took place in Egypt, jailbreak was done. In the jailbreak, thousands of prisoners were escaped and subsequently, Mohammed Morsi of Muslim Brotherhood became the president of the country. He was the first democratically elected president and subsequently, he was thrown out in a military coup and now he was awarded death penalty along with 100 others due to the prison break in the year 2011. Due to the prison break in the year 2011, Mohammed Morsi of Egypt was given death sentence and Amnesty International London based body is not happy with the development. Right friends? Look into the next one, humanitarian crisis in Andaman Sea, off the Thailand coast, Rohingyas. Rohingyas are of a Muslim community. Muslims are minorities in Myanmar. Myanmar is not recognizing Rohingyas. There are no civil rights. They are into forced labor. Several Rohingyas are migrating away from Myanmar. They are migrating to the neighboring Bangladesh as well as to Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia. Human trafficking is taking place. Several boats are operating between Myanmar to Thailand coast, but this problem got compounded when mass graves were found in Thailand coast last week. This problem got compounded when mass graves were found along the Thailand coast last week and they are suspected to be of migrant Rohingyas. They are suspected to be of migrant Rohingyas. Subsequently, Thailand government increased their vessel along the coast because of which smugglers left the boats in mid-sea and left the boats as it is and several thousands of Rohingyas were struck up in mid-sea in small boats without food and water and now Malaysia and Indonesia agreed to take those boats. It is big humanitarian problem Somehow with the magnanimity of Malaysia as well as Indonesia, this problem was solved to some extent. Now the people struck up at sea are being evacuated to Malaysia and Indonesia as both the countries decided to take back these Rohingyas who are being trafficked from Myanmar and Bangladesh on humanitarian grounds. Right friends, look into the next issue. Ramadi, the capital of Anbar province in Iraq, captured by ISIS. ISIS is making their advances. All of you are well aware. 
Islamic State captured parts of Syria as well as Iraq. Anbar province is the largest province in Iraq. And they captured the provincial capital Ramadi. This is uh, the main cause of worry not only for Iraq but also for USA. Yes, USA is not able to control the onslaught of ISIS in spite of their eight strikes. Now, Ramadi, the capital of the largest province in Iraq, is in the hands of ISIS. And recently, they also caught hold of world famous archaeological site Palmyra in Syria. Right, look into the next issue crisis in Burundi. Burundi is the African nation situated towards the southeastern part of Africa. Burundi was into civil war up to the year 2005. Subsequently, it elected its president as per the constitution. President can be there only for two terms or ten years. As per the constitution, president can be there for two terms. The existing president of uh, Burundi completed two terms. He want to contest for the third time. He says that during the first time, I was nominated by parliament. So, I was elected only once. That's why I can get elected this time also. But opposition parties as well as people feel that the two term tenure of Burundi president is over because of this. Several protests took place in Burundi. Burundi is in Africa and it came out of civil war in the year 2005. And as per the constitution, president can contest only for two terms. But the president's version is, first time I was nominated by parliament. So, that's why I can contest one more time. Right friends, look into the other issue across the states. Jai Ram Jai Lalita, acquitted in disproportionate assets case. All of you are well aware, last year trial court judge imposed a penalty of 100 crores of rupees and the four years imprisonment due to the disproportionate assets case against the former chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Jai Ram Jai Lalita. And now the high court acquitted Jai Lalita and three others in disproportionate assets case and now she is going to become chief minister of Tamil Nadu for the fifth time. The high court judge C. R. Kumaraswamy stated that her assets are well within limit of 10% uh, of uh, the actual calculation. Right friends, look into the next issue. Governors were appointed for four states and Two governors were shifted to northeastern states. The four governors, Draupati Murmu, Jharkhand, then Rajkova, Arunachal Pradesh, Tadhakata Rai, Tripura, and Shanmuganathan, Meghalaya, and most of them are the functionaries of Bharatiya Janta Party. It became almost a practice for the ruling party to accommodate their functionaries as governors. This is not an exception. All the governments are doing it. Similarly, the present government also appointed several BJP functionaries as the governors for various states. Right friends? into the economy event. K. V. Kamath is going to be the first head of BRICS Bank. Last year during the Fortaleza summit, it was decided that BRICS is going to establish its bank. The name is a New Development Bank. First president will be from India. K. V. Kamath is appointed as the first president of uh, BRICS Bank. 
Mangalore born graduated from Regional Engineering College Karnataka MBA from IIM Ahmedabad he worked 8 years with uh, Asian Development Bank 13 years as uh, MD and CEO of ICICI Bank he is uh, credited with uh, transforming the ICICI Bank uh, as the largest private sector lender in the country and he is also credited with uh, improving the retail portfolio of ICICI Bank at present he is the non executive chairman of icici bank as well as non executive chairman of infosys he is going to resign from both the posts and new development bank will have its headquarters in shanghai and the bank will be set up with a paid in capital of 50 billion dollars 50 billion dollars paid in capital to be equally shared by five nations BRICS has got five nations, and second thing is it will have contingency reserve arrangement of around hundred billion dollars. It will have contingency reserve arrangement of hundred billion dollars. K V Kamath will be in this post for five year term, and the next president will be from Brazil, followed by Russia, as per the terms of agreement with regard to the new development bank. Right, look into the. next issue global school rankings by oecd organization for economic cooperation and development oecd means organization for economic cooperation and development based in paris in france it made a survey of 15 year old with regard to their abilities in science and maths and in this survey surprisingly the top 5 ranks are backed by asian countries the top 5 ranks backed by asian countries they are singapore hong kong south korea japan and taiwan it shows the importance given by governments for education in asian countries the last 5 places were backed by Ghana, South Africa, Honduras, Morocco, and Oman. India is not participated in these rankings. That means backing five ranks by Asian countries shows the might of Asia in near future. coming to the last event of the week sudirman cup china wins for the 10th time this sudirman cup was instituted in the name of dick sudirman famous badminton player from indonesia and this tournament prestigious tournament started in the year 1989 this is the 14th edition china won 10 times out of 14 times showing its supremacy in badminton this is the sixth consecutive win by china and china defeated japan easily by 3-0 and this sudirman cup is held in all the five categories men singles women singles men's doubles women's doubles and mixed doubles games are being held in all the five categories and subsequently winner will be decided based on the wins out of 5 games india fared poorly by losing to both malaysia as well as south korea and please don't forget china won this consecutively sixth time and 10th time out of 14 editions and this sudirman cup was instituted in the name of sudirman famous badminton player from indonesia and with this let us conclude 20th week lecture please do join for question and answer sessions have a nice day thank you